spotting people, if you're a good judge of human nature, you'll want to match skills tonight with our panel of experts as we invite you to play What's My Line? And now, let's meet our lineup of distinguished personalities whose lines you probably already know. First, the distinguished neuropsychiatrist, Dr. Richard Hoffman. And uh, to my right, my favorite eminent poet, anthologist, and perpetual boy scholar, Louis Antomana. <laughs> thank you, Dick. Uh, thank you for adding the scholar. I was a little bit worried about that perpetual boy. But here to my right is my favorite Broadway columnist and girl about town, Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, Louis. I would like to introduce that wonderful Toastmaster, raconteur, and former governor of New Jersey, Harold Hoffman. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy, for, for not pronouncing that racketeer. <laughs> and we have here the distinguished news analyst, commentator, and our moderator, Mr. John Daly. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. In fact, welcome to our premier telecast of What's My Line. And I certainly hope our distinguished panelists, members of our panel tonight, are going to do a fine job of human analysis. In other words, be able to answer the question, What's My Line? Now, to start things rolling, I'd like the panel to meet our first challenger, whose occupation it's their job to ferret out. Will you sign in, please, miss? Pat? Finch. Pat Finch, will you come over here, please, Miss Finch? Well, it is Miss Finch, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right, now, first of all, tell us where you live. I live in Manhattan. You nervous, Pat? Just slightly. Oh, don't be. Take a look at the panel. You haven't got a thing to worry about. Now, one thing the uh -oh. panel wants to do is to uh, get a closer look at you. So would you please walk over to the end position, Dr. Hoffman's position, and uh, any reasonable request they make while you meet, if they'd like to look at your hands or anything like that. If Finch may be a bird, may be a fish. Both uh, and John. <laughs> would you uh, do a kick for me? Oh. <laughs> uh. um, this is a very tight skirt. <laughs> well, Pat, I'll let you out. You can do the kick. Uh, we'll accept that. How about you, Mr. Adam? Mr. Finch, would you just uh, come a little closer in a nice way? Is that which I am inhaling, is that our page or my sin? I mean, my sin in a perfume sense. <laughs> Neither. Neither. Well, I've lost that. All right, Miss Kilgallen, you have a chance. Uh, is you... there a label in your suit? Yes, there is. Could I see it, please? If it wouldn't be embarrassing, I mean. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a very nice label. We won't uh, mm -hmm. say it out loud. I don't think. What about you, Governor Hosmer? Miss Finch, would you balance this book upon your head, please? And walk. Oh, that's very good, Pat. Well, I think that's enough of that. Miss Finch, come over here and sit down next to me, if you will, please. And now I'll tell you what happens at this point. We left the panel on the basis of your handwriting, what you've said, how you've said it, and uh, a close look at you. Take one wild, free guess as to what your line is. We'll begin the wild, free guesses with Governor Hoffman. Well, don't you think, Mr. Daly, you should first tell us whether she's self-employed? Oh, I might tell you, you know, that later on. You oh, go ahead well, and take later. your wild, free guess. All right. Uh, the way she balanced that book, I think she's a... Bookkeeper, an erratic bookkeeper. An erratic bookkeeper. <laughs> well, what about you, Miss Kilgallen? I think she's a student of the drama. A student of the drama. Mr. Undermeyer? I think she gathers statistics for rain in North Dakota. <laughs> oh, no, you wouldn't want her to go to North Dakota. What about you, Dr. Hoffman? Well, in view of the fact that she thought her skirt was embarrassing her kicking, I still believe she belongs to Terpsichore. To Terpsichore? Well, that's very, that must be the other side of Great Britain, undoubtedly. But anyway, you're all wrong. Dr. And uh, now that we have had uh, some wild guesses, I want our viewers at home to get a really close look at Miss Finch. At the same time, they will find out exactly what Miss Finch's line is, but the panel will not. Now, panel, you know the rules. Individually and in turn, you can answer or ask questions, and as long as you get the answer yes, you can continue. When you get an answer no, it costs the panel five dollars, ten no's, and the panel has lost the game, and Miss Finch wins. As many times as you get an answer no from her, Miss Finch will gather five dollars into her treasure chest. Well, now that we've gotten this far, we give the panel one more bit of help, if you don't mind, Miss Finch. We'll tell you that she is salaried. 
We'll move from the particular to the general, and we'll begin the general questions with Miss Kilgallen. Oh, uh, are you uh, engaged in selling services as opposed to products? Yes, I am. Uh, does the uh, employment take you from place to place? No. You That's remain static. One down and nine to go. And Mr. Undermine. Miss Finch, you sell services in one particular place, I gather. A, should I say, a very particular place? Or yes. isn't it? It is a very particular place. That is, it is a particular location. Uh, in this location, do people pay to look at you? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer that question for Miss Finch. They don't directly pay to look at her, but no. a man would be an idiot if he didn't think that that a was man, part of what he was saying. I will, I will take that hint, uh, Mr. Daly. A man would be an idiot not to look at her. Uh, do more men pay it? Do more men look at you than women in this very particular place? Yes. They do. Uh, <laughs> I can't understand that. Uh, <laughs> is your field... Uh, entertainment rather than education? Well, no. No, two down and eight to go. You got rather far afield there, I'm afraid, Mr. Undermeyer. Dr. Hoffman, we now get to you. Well, I don't think she has to work at entertaining. Looking at her is entertaining. But uh, do you work in a field where your beauty contributes to your ability to earn a salary? Uh, yes, I would say so. Yes, don't be misled too much, but the answer would be yes. Uh, do you sit at your work? No. Uh, I will accept the question as not having been asked and say that uh, she would sit some of the time, stand some of the time. You can go ahead, Dr. Hunter. Uh, do you work for more than one person? No. Uh, that's uh, three down and seven to go, I believe. Uh, now, Governor Hoffman, it's your turn. You're on the block. Are you, in your present uh, occupation, generally uh, tired as you are at present in the same style? Can you speak close? No. Uh, no, she is not, but I don't think it would be fair to strike you out in the questioning for that. Um, she could, by some stretch of the imagination, wear ordinary street clothes, although she would have do a you, tendency to... Do you, generally, to do you generally wear a uniform or custom? Yes. Is, are your services performed in a theater? No. That I... is uh, four down and six to go, and Miss Kilgallen, you have a chance again. Uh, is your profession one that is usually regarded by young girls as fairly glamorous? Yes. Uh, do, does your profession require any particular specifications as to uh, height, weight, etc.? No. That's five down and five an to go. And uh, Mr. Undermeyer, I hope that you can prune this tree a little bit. Uh, in your particular profession, do you deal with more men than with women? She deal is not the right word. I should say, uh, do you care more for men? I don't mean do you care. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. That's all right. Do you Have take fun. care of men or any parts of uh, their possessions or things like that? Yes. Oh, you do? Uh, consultation, please. You can have 20 uh, seconds for consultation. Uh, we, are, uh, we are of one man mind here. We are of one man here, one mind here, <laughs> that it might be something in a restaurant. A hat check girl, says my Would you like to put the question? <laughs> Are you a hat check girl? Yes, I am. Well, congratulations, Mr. Undermeyer. Yes. <laughs> Miss Fink is a hat check girl in the stock club panel. Oh. I thought perhaps a couple of old rounders like Doctors Hoffman and Poet Undermeyer would know her on sight. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Miss Finch. You won five times, so you will win $25 tonight. And thanks a lot for coming up to play What's My Line. Thank is, you. It, uh, is it true that the stork brought her here? The stork <laughs> practically did. Well, thanks very much, Miss Finch. Any post-mortems panel, do you feel that you did rather well that time? Oh, oh. I think that wasn't bad at all for the first one. I think you did very well. All right, then let's uh, move on and find out who our next challenger is. Would you sign in, please, sir? <laughs> Arthur... Arthur Feinberg. Well, Mr. Feinberg, come over here and stand beside me for just a moment, and if you will, tell us where you live. Brooklyn. Have you... Brooklyn! 
This usually produces applause. Everybody must be from New Jersey tonight. Well, Mr. Feinberg, do you feel very nervous when you look at this talented panel of ours? Only from the knees down. Only from the knees down you're nervous. Well, take those knees over, if you will, to the far side of the panel, and any reasonable request they make of you, would you please uh, accede to them? I'd just like to shake hands with you. Could I feel your muscle, please? <laughs> I have, a, I have a geographical question to ask. Mr. Feinberg is one Brooklyn man to another. I'm a Remsen Street boy myself. Uh, what part of Brooklyn are you from? Bensonhurst. Oh, well. Uh, that does. Well, I think that's enough, Mr. Feinberg. You come on over here and sit down next to me. I don't think the panel needs to find out any more from a close look at you. And uh, now, as you probably have noticed, we give the panel one wild free guess on the basis of your handwriting, what you've said, how you've said it, and their good close look at you. At you. Governor Hoffman, Hoffman, will you begin with the uh, wild guesses, please? Well, I think, uh, I think uh, Mr. Feinberg's a manufacturer. Uh, Miss Kilgallen. Yes, I'll go even further. I think he's a manufacturer of men's clothing. Uh, Mr. Undermeyer. I think that he is a professional dodger roofer. Uh, that <laughs> probably is true, but it unfortunately isn't the full answer. What about you, Dr. Hoffman? I place him in the garment trade. You place them in the garment trade. Well, you're all wrong, and once again, we're going to let our viewers at home get a good, close look at Mr. Feinberg, and they will find out at the same time what his line is. Panel, you know the rules. You ask questions. Yes. Get a no answer, and it's going to cost you $5. And if you get 10 no's, the panel is licked. Well, I think we've made a very good beginning. Now, I'm going to give you this much help and tell you that um, Mr. Feinberg is self-employed. Is that right, Mr. Feinberg? Or are you salary? I'm salary. Mr. Feinberg is salary. He works for somebody else. Now, with that as a starter, Mr. Undermeyer, suppose you begin the general question. Well, the audience has completely thrown me out off by their wrong <laughs> We were hoping they would. I think we'll get Mr. Feinberg off the stand and put the audience on instead. <laughs> you well, go ahead with the I, question. I gather from the laughter that Mr. Feinberg is nothing of a manufacturer whatsoever. He's probably a, a, a highly priced educator. And I would guess... And I'm going to ask Could we you, have a question instead yes, of all I would be glad to ask. Are you in a, uh, a field which is educational? No. <laughs> no, that is one down. And nine to go. Dr. Hoffman? Are you in a field which is serviceable? Do you mean by that does he... That people need what you sell? Oh, uh, who wants to say yes? Yes. Uh, you say so. Doesn't he know? Did he say he knows? Yes. He say he was employed. Yes. Um, salary. Do you go from place to place in your work? Part of the time. And uh, is your work competitive? Yes. And uh, do you sell things that up to pretty high figures. Well, now, we haven't as yet... Um, I'd you like know, to stop you here, because we haven't as yet uh, adduced any particulars as to what he sells, whether it be services well, uh, or the, products. the commodity with which you're occupied. I suppose there is some commodity with which he's occupied, anywhere well, from... This is a reasonable houses. assumption, but I was just making the point, Dr. Yes. Hoffman, that it has not as yet been adduced as to whether he sold services or products. Well, well it might help you. I might ask, answer. then, do you sell services? Yes. And with those services, is there an occasional product? <laughs> I imagine there is. <laughs> yes, is the answer to that. And is that, uh, that uh, the, by services you mean advice? Uh, would you like to ask the yes, question? Yes, I'd like. Do you mean advice? That you give advice to no. people? No. No, that's two down and eight to go. Service. But some valuable information has been uh, gleaned. How about you, Governor <coughs> Hoffman? You're on the Feinberg, block. Now. You consider that you're engaged in a profession. It's against the business. It's a uh, profession. Yes. Well, now, uh, wait a minute. Wait, I, wait, I have to move in here. It's not strictly, as we interpret uh, business and professions, a profession. Well, no, it's uh, three down and seven to go, I... and I'm afraid Miss Kilgallen takes over. Oh, and you answered no. Yes. This Great, must though. be the most unusual business. <laughs> it, uh, uh, it's a bit unusual. It's not uncommon, but it's a bit unusual. Uh, you, you say that uh, the service that you sell and the occasional product is uh, a necessity. Well, I would, I would help well, you this Well, rather than a luxury, shall we say. Uh, yes, it can be, but don't be misled too much by occasional. We answered the question yes because it was phrased that way. 
It's not necessarily an occasional product. I mean, leave your mind open on that score. Uh, well, may I ask a direct question? You certainly Is may. Is there a product involved? Do you, do you sell a product as well as your services? No. No, but you were very close. That's four down and six to go. That's a moot point which needs clarification. <laughs> Would you like to clarify it? What about, Doctor? He does not sell the product. That's the point there. What about you, Doctor? Or rather, Mr. Louis Andermeyer, I think it's your turn. Would you be occupied with a technique, a, a manipulation, rather than something with a machine? <laughs> no. So I think, I think we could answer that question. He, he, manipulation plays a large part in the end product of his service. So uh, let Could us withdraw you? that question. You go right. ahead. Uh, are you connected in any branch of, with, uh, with any branch of medicine? No. No, that's five down and five to go. And we've spent quite a bit of time on Mr. Feinberg, so I'll give the panel just a little bit longer on this Mr. one. Mr. Feinberg, do you have to do a great deal of convincing in order to sell your services? Do you meet with opposition? <laughs> yes. And do you work uh, mostly, do, uh, do you, are your services mostly extended to women? Yes. When the husbands aren't home? <laughs> what? <laughs> really? <laughs> well, they may be selling carpet sweepers. How do I know? I don't know as well. Yes, I agree. Well, uh, could we have a consultation? Home. All right, I'll give you 15 seconds for consultation. He, he, he has right. a product. He has a product. Oh, I think he's a brush uh, But he doesn't, he doesn't sell a product. Could it be like those television sets that they put in your home, but they don't sell them? They just they rent them or, or they leave them? Uh, you know, consultation period is over. Dr. Hoffman, please continue with the no, question. Uh, involving has your rent? work anything to do with any form of insurance? No. All uh, right, that is uh, six down and four to go, and I think I'm going to let Mr. Feinberg win by default because you're not moving even close to the area. Mr. Feinberg is a diaper company service salesman. Is that right, Mr. Feinberg? That's right, Cafe Diaper Service. Thank you very much for coming up to see us. That means that uh, you win $50 and you stumped our panel and take it. That's getting below the belt, isn't it? We, we have a... Well, I'll tell you what, you can all take this out of my hide afterwards. We only have 30 minutes now, so on let's the leave the postmortems in this class. Now let's get on with our, our game, and let's see who our next challenger is. Would you sign in, please, sir? If a diaper doesn't give insurance, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Seymour! If it isn't a necessity, I don't know what is. Seymour Kalabi. Mr. Kalabi, come over here and stand beside me, will you? Dr. Hoffman just said the diaper does give insurance. So you can see we're going to have some trouble after the show. How do you feel about it? Yes or no? Well, where do you yes. live? Tell us that. Forest Hills. You live in Forest yes. Hills. Well, Mr. Claudine, would you, as you've seen our friends, oh, you've got some friends here. Stand over by uh, Dr. Hoffman and walk by the panel. Accede to any reasonable demands they make. How do you do, How sir? do you do, Doctor? You wouldn't care to sing one line of a song for me, would you? Uh, first line of any song, you, you can know. You say no. I want to say no, but I also want to sing. <laughs> <laughs> I can say no, I think. No. Oh, no, let's hear it. Show me the way to go home. Okay. 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 All right, I... I that don't... way. This way. I think uh, you've probably frightened the panel out of their wits with that, Mr. McCullough. Now, will you sit down here for just a moment? As you know, they get one wild free guess now on the basis of your handwriting, what you've said, how you've said it, and how you look. Uh, Dr. Hoffman, would you, or rather, Governor Hoffman, begin the free guesses? That's, that's all right. I'm a doctor, too, but I'll tell you about that some other time. All right, fine. Uh, I'm confused free, enough as it is. You uh, stay governor. Free guess, I think he's a taxi driver. Uh, that's wrong. What about you, Miss Kilgallen? Uh, I think he's a subway guard. That's wrong. What about you, Mr. Ottermeyer? I think he's an income tax misleader. That's wrong. What about you, Dr. Hoffman? I think he's interested in alcohol. I mean, not in drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he might, he might have a slight interest in alcohol. Who knows? But now let's have our viewers at home get a good close look at Mr. Kaladi, and meanwhile they'll learn what his line is. Panel, you know the rules. And you should be all ready to go with your questions. No answers cost you $5. Let's begin the general questioning. After telling you that Mr. Kolodny is self-employed, uh, let's begin the general questioning with uh, Governor Hoffman. Mr. Kolodny, uh, does your work uh, require you to use a vehicle? Uh, no. One down and nine to go. That's Mr. Kilgallen. Uh, that was a taxi driver. There you go. <laughs> That's right. Do you consider yourself a businessman? I have to, sure. Uh, uh, that is, as opposed to a professional man. Uh, would you like to rephrase that question, because it might be very important. Um, well, do you consider... Um, Say, are you? Uh, are you a businessman? 
Oh, I think today in making a living, you have to be a businessman. Yes, but I think that's a moot issue. We'll have to call that two down and eight to go. He's not a businessman. Mr. Undermeyer? If you are not a businessman, are you what we would call a professional? Yes. You profess to be a professional. Thank you. Professional. Yes. Yes. Good. Uh, do you deal with the well-being of your clients rather than their beauty? Uh, no. Oh, I would no. say, yes. Yeah, your right. well-being is much more important than your yeah. clients' beauty. Uh, after you are through with them, that is, if you ever are through with them, uh, do they feel better? <laughs> yes? Yes. Yes, they yes. would be. Uh, you operate on, or if you operate, on all sorts of, uh, of things. For instance, would I be better after you finished with me? <laughs> I, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's three down and seven to go. Dr. Huffman is now your ball to carry. I, I know you can't improve, Louis. Anyway, that was really a question you shouldn't have asked. However, do you use tools in your work? Yes. Are they small tools, you know... Hand tools or machine tools? Hand tools. Hand tools. Uh, did you have to go to any particular school to learn your yes. profession? Uh, did it require a degree? Yes. Uh, do you have your... Do you have patients or clients? Uh, or both? Both. Do they sit when they come to you? <laughs> yes. Some do. do they change position from time to time? Yes. Do you give them comfort or pain or both? Uh, both. Are you a dentist? No. <laughs> That's four down and six to go, and back to you, Governor Hoffman. Did your profession bring you into uh, physical contact with your patients or clients? Yes. Are you by any chance a chiropractor? No. That is five down and five to go, Miss Gilgallon. Uh, do you have a title? Yes. Uh, are you a doctor? Are you called doctor? Yes. Well, uh, are you a psychiatrist? No. That's uh, six uh, down and four to go, Mr. Rodemeyer. He denied that vehemently. You are <laughs> You're a doctor. You deal, I presume, with living uh, things with living beings. <laughs> Usually, yes. Usually. Both sexes? Yes. <laughs> uh, conference? May we have a conference? You may have Surely. 15 seconds for a conference. Con living things? Uh, I'll bet he's a veterinarian. Yeah, I do, too. Yes. Uh, right, do, you deal with, do you deal with animals? Yes. Are you an animal doctor? Yes. Are you a veterinarian? Yes. Very good. Thank you very much. One six times, and so you do get a prize, and congratulations to our panel. They did very well. And now we have something special. Channel, uh, panel, rather, you remember I told you we'd be using masks tonight. Now, before we introduce our next challenger to you panel members, we're going to give you an even greater handicap than you faced with the first three. We're not going to let you see him. If we did, you'd <laughs> recognize him immediately because he's a celebrity. So you don't see him. I'm going to ask Madeline Tyler to pass out blindfolds to you. <coughs> and uh, will you please see that they're on very securely, Miss Tyler? Yes, I thought Miss Tyler would enhance the scenery here quite a bit. I see the audience agrees with us. All right, let's see. Dr. Huffman has his mask on. Mr. Undermeyer. You mean I can't even look at Miss yeah. Tyler? Well, you can't. I'm sorry. You're penalized already on that. I don't know what Miss Tyler's line is, but I bet she has a good one. That's, oh, that's a fine mask they have for you there, Miss Yes, Ms. I have Gilgallan. a glamour one. Isn't that yes, wonderful? Yes, that's for girls. This is going to ruin my mask. But I think that oh. Mr. Undermeyer's mask improves his appearance a good deal. Maybe we ought to get him... That's a dirty crack, John Dale. <laughs> get him one to use all the time. All right, now it's up to you to identify our guest celebrity. Are all the masks on so that you can't see them? Okay, will our celebrity please come on stage now and sign up? Are you will you sign up there on the... <laughs> white sheet of paper, and I will call you Mr. X, if you don't mind, because we don't want the panel to, know, panel, panel to know too much about you. I'm not going to allow you any wild guesses on this uh, panel. Uh, would you come over and sit down, Mr. X, please? Now, I want to say this. The money that is lost to our Mr. X is going to go to the Hot Foundation. All right, let's see how quickly you can identify Mr. X, and we'll start with Miss Kilgallen. Um, well, if you're a celebrity, are you tall, dark, and handsome? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll have to uh, accept 
the no there, but it doesn't have to do with the, the handsome part of it. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Undermeyer. Are you small, dark, and handsome? <laughs> <laughs> well, partly. Yes, I think. You go ahead, Mr. Undermeyer. Uh, the answer is yes. Good. Yes. Are you, judging from that fine, vibrant tenor, a singer? No. That's two down and eight to go, and it's yours, Dr. Hoffman. In spite of the fact that you're a celebrity, do you consider your life worthwhile? <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> I didn't hear. Yes. Yes, he did. In other words, you give comfort or joy or substance to people. Well... Yes, we'll take a yes on that. You see, Doc, our time is running out very well. Well, are you engaging in art? Uh, well, it could be. Withdraw the question. Are you engaged in a science? You want to withdraw that one? No, I think we have three down and seven to go. Can't give you any more leeway. Governor Hoffman, you might be able to do very well with this one. Uh, I do not think you're in the field of government. Am I right? That's right. That's very uh, well questioned. Do you, gen do you work indoors? Uh, do you generally work outdoors? Yes. We have only a are, minute and a half. Are you engaged in the field of sports? Yes. Joe DiMaggio, I think. No, are you, he's not in town. Are you, uh, are you connected with a sport that is generally not being played at this time of year? Yes. Baseball. Are you connected with the sport in New York? Yes. In greater New York? If, yes. If I said that you are not with the Brooklyn Dodgers, would I be right? You would be. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Continue, if, Governor Hoffman. If I said you were with some New York aggregation of athletes, would I be right? <laughs> yes. I can only give you a little more time, Governor Hoffman, so you'll have to drive for the finish. Well, I think I have this fellow. All right, <laughs> well, let's take a try, and, because I'm going to have to Two in mind. I think it's Phil Rizzuto. Phil Rizzuto is right into the regulation. And Phil, tell us, what do you do during the off-season day? Well, I work in the American shop, the clothing store over in Oh, how's this? Pretty good. The right. American shop store over in Well, well I must say, you should be able to sell a suit very well and very fast. And thanks a lot for being our celebrity you guest still live in on New Jersey, What's My Line. Yes, sir. That's good. I yes. stick to my original guess. I still think that Phil would make a very good singer. <laughs> oh, I think he'd make a wonderful singer, but he's one of the finest baseball players that ever came down the track. Can you sing with Ralph Franklin? Thanks again very much for being our celebrity guest on What's My Line Tonight, Phil Rizzuto, and a very fine piece of work, Governor Hoffman. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to say that our time for this evening is up. So, until two weeks from tonight, when once again we'll try to see how good we are at spotting the occupation of our challenges, I will have to say good night, Dr. Hoffman. And good night, Louis Antemeyer. And good night, Dorothy Kilgallen. And good night, Harold Hoffman. And good night, John Daly. And good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Life. What's My Life has been presented by CBS in association with Goodson Todman Productions. Produced by Gil Pates, and directed by Paul Monroe.